Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. Our next guest made history as the first African-American woman to secure a major party's nomination for governor. In the process, she became the spokesperson for the ongoing threat of voter suppression and fraud in this country. The fight for voter rights is far from over. Please welcome Stacey Abrams. Yay! Yes, we are so happy to have yes, Stacey we are. Abrams joining yes. us down to the circle. Before we get into your amazing political career, we want to get into some personal stuff. <laughs> we are all advocates of HBCUs here and uh, <laughs> But we're advocates for HBCUs. Uh, we've got Bowie State, we've got Tennessee State, yes. Florida AM, and m and of course, Spelman. Yes. 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 yes, yes. And that is where you got your political start. Tell us a little bit about how Spelman galvanized that political mm. side of you. So I've been involved in politics peripherally. My parents were very much a part of the civil rights movement. We went with them to vote. They were very strong activists. and. You know, we did protests, we did all kinds of things, but when I got to Spelman, I'd never run for office. Mm -hmm. And Janetta Cole was the president of Spelman wow. College mm. at the time. I used to go and she had office hours, so I would go and bug her mm -hmm. every week with some complaint I had about the college, and finally she <laughs> said, <laughs> <laughs> she was like, stop coming to me. If you want things to get better, go do it yourself. Wow. And she, you know, but she said, that, you know, don't stop coming to see me, you should go. <laughs> it was a very sonorous voice when right. she said it. It sounded like God was telling you to go do something. <laughs> and so I did. She said, run for office. So I ran for student body. Uh, freshman class council, then sophomore, uh, I ran as a sophomore, and then I ran for student body vice president. I uh, was the first non-Greek to win uh, mm, the VP slot, wow, and then became nice. president of Spelman College nice. SGA. Oh, wow. Nice. 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 For you, nice. started early. Wow. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Let's talk about before your college years. You you tell us of how you were invited to the governor's mansion yes. while you were still in high school. Mm. So can you tell us about that experience? So in Georgia, when you are the valedictorian of your high school, you are invited to meet the governor of Georgia. And so I was one of student one of the students from across the state. There are 180 school districts and you know dozens of high schools in each district. We were invited to the governor's mansion. My parents were working poor. My mom and dad were in grad school at the time, but we'd never had much money and we didn't have a car. So to get to the governor's mansion, we actually took the bus. Oh, uh, wow. It was called MARTA. And we took the bus. We didn't think anything of it. The bus had gotten us around the city. So we get to the governor's mansion, we get off the bus, we walk across the street, and we, there are these really long black gates in front of the governor's mansion mm -hmm. in Georgia. We walk up the driveway where everyone else is coming in a car. And we get to the guard and he refuses us entry. He oh, wow. looks at me and my parents and he was like, this is a private event, you don't belong here. Oh, wow. Hmm. And my dad says, no, no, so this is my daughter Stacy. she's one of the valedictorians. And the guard doesn't look at his checklist. He has a list of all the names, but what he sees is the bus that's pulling away, this wow. bus that we just got off of. And in his mind, that was a disqualifier. Mm. Oh, wow. And so again, he told us we, we didn't belong there. Uh, he'd never met Robert or Carolyn Abrams. So. <laughs> Together. My parents were studying to become ministers. They had not become pastors <laughs> yet. <laughs> and my father may have mentioned that he was going to find himself in a dark and hot place. <laughs> and so he did find my name right. right. Oh, sure. <laughs> the checklist. But I, I tell the story because I don't remember meeting the governor. I don't remember meeting my fellow valedictorians. All I remember is a man standing in front of the most powerful oh, wow. place in Georgia, mm -hmm. looking at me and telling me I don't belong oh, because oh, of wow. something that he saw. And wow. so I've been committed to changing his mind and the minds of everyone else ever since. Yeah. Absolutely. So Stacey, that actually uh, inspired you to go into political office. It did. I, I will say that I, it's one of those memories I have that I hadn't thought about in years mm -hmm. because it's, it's a painful thing to, to be told that you aren't not, that you're not sufficient. Mm. And that notion of insufficiency, for some, it becomes a crutch, or worse, it becomes just a, a weight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For me, apparently, it was a galvanizer. Yeah. Yeah. I, I spent a lot of money trying to get in that governor's mansion. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and we're going to get it done. I yes, just, right. This didn't happen quite yet. But, but yeah, it, and, and, and I think the larger point for me, when I was going around the state, we went to all 159 counties. Wow. It's making certain that no matter what your community, no matter what the attribute, mm -hmm. there's nothing that, that disqualifies us from power. That's there's right. nothing that disqualifies us 
from being equal and having access. Mm -hmm. It is simply about having leaders who are willing to fight as hard for your access as they are for their own. Yes, absolutely. Yes, yes. You know, Stacey, the whole country cheered you on in your race for governor um, in the state of Georgia. Um, but this isn't the first time that you've made history, okay? First <laughs> woman to lead either party in the Georgia General Assembly in 2010. Okay, let's get the people educated. <laughs> a circle. You were the first African American to lead in the Georgia House of Representatives as House Minority Leader. Mm -hmm. Do you find that it is still strange or is it still unnerving that we're still in an age where there's so many firsts? Mm -hmm. it, it is a challenge, but part of my internal ethos is that you look at these challenges as opportunities, not only for yourself, but when you're first, that means you get to open the door. Mm -hmm. And if you do it right, you get to prop it open. Mm -hmm. And if you're really good, you get to blow it wide open. Yes! yes. yes. That's a nugget right there. <laughs> that's, the, that's the mission that I have. Yes, yeah. yeah. yes. That's well, you have five brothers and sisters. Yes. How did they shape you personally and as a politician? We don't have that kind of time. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm the second of six kids. We, the sort of my architecture of our family. My older sister is the captain of the ship. Mm. Um, I'm finance and logistics. My sister Leslie, who's a, a judge. I love it. Leslie is the cruise director, and then the younger three are crew. Okay. Uh, <laughs> they're sort of just they're dispatched to do what they're supposed to. Right. But, <laughs> but what that's meant for our family is that we're very close knit. We mm -hmm. we they were every one of them um, was involved. I mean, my brother Walter. I talk about him a lot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he let me tell his story. Yeah. And he was willing to let me share his issues. My older sister is an anthropologist. She's the the new uh, chief diversity officer at her college helped me really think about and shape how I talk about race and class and gender mm -hmm. and access. My sister Leslie is a, a judge, federal judge down in Georgia. She couldn't be a part of anything directly, but right. was always there in spirit. And my little sister Janine and my brother Richard came to every event they could. They were there. They, they put their children in my commercials so people would know I like kids, even though I don't have any of my own. <laughs> um, so, and, and my parents came in, my parents are gonna be 70 this year. They came in canvassed. Wow. Yes. Uh, my, I think my dad thought he was running for office. Because <laughs> uh, they live in Mississippi, but came to, yeah. to make sure they could help. Well, yeah. we'll talk more about who canvassed for you and yes. the difference Stacey Abrams is making in the world of politics when we return on Sister Circle Live. Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. We're continuing our discussion with the amazing Stacey Abrams. <laughs> Yay. Oh my God! I tell you, I love you so much. We have so many similarities. I come from a family of six as well. Which one? I'm next to the baby. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, we know that aside from your political work, and this is something that I would do if I were a writer. You know, you do romance novels. So fun. Mm. How'd that come about? Um, I'm really bad at dating. Okay. Um, <laughs> No, I wouldn't say bad at it. I'm just, not, I'm a work in progress. Uh, <laughs> but it was, I, I've always loved romance novels because uh, I think they're some of the strongest stories to tell. And it's hard to tell the mm -hmm. same basic story in a way that's innovative and fresh and new yes. each time. Plus, um, I was angry with my ex-boyfriend, so I used his dissertation mm -hmm. as the premise for the book. <laughs> but he actually languishes in prison in the book for the rest of eternity. Oh, um, wow. Yes. <laughs> and so I wrote the first one in law school. <laughs> Got it published. They then came back and said, "Would you write more?" Because I write romantic suspense. Uh, I kill a lot of people, and whoever survives falls in love. <laughs> <laughs> so I wrote a Selena Montgomery because at the time I was writing, I was also writing tax articles, mm -hmm. and no one wanted to read romance by Alan Greenspan. So I had different <laughs> identities for my writing. But it, I mean, part of it for me was writing about strong black women who were able to do these different things. So my first heroine was a chemical physicist, one was a cognitive wow. scientist, mm. oh, wow. one was a grifter, but she was really good at it. <laughs> <laughs> so really getting to explore all the different facets of who we are, mm. but always having strong heroines who had to grapple with their challenges, but find their way and find someone to be their partner when they did it. Oh, that's Ooh, amazing. Wow. Let's talk about your new book. It's called Lead from the Outside. Yes. So what's, what's that book about? So the original version, uh, Minority Leader, uh, came out um, in 18, and it's really a, a combination of memoir and how-to. I, I talk about the fact that power does not belong to those who are born to it. Power belongs to those of us who are willing to grasp oh, for it. Nice. Ooh, and good. so it's, it's being re-released in March yeah. as Lead from the Outside. And the point of the book is it's got lessons in it. It talks about mm. how I made mistakes on money, fine, you know, not only finances, huh. but failure and fear and all the things we're told not to talk about.
but how that's helped galvanize me and get me to where I am and wow. I want others to understand that they have the same power that not being in a position of power naturally does not deny us agency to find it and use it. Mm. Yes. Mm. That's oh my God. Oh my God. Miss so Stacy, we are so um, proud of you here down to the yes, Sister Circle, are. child. We just talked about you <laughs> like you was going out of style every time. Every time, <laughs> every time we got a chance. Every time we got a chance, we're just so proud. And you know, just me personally, in my spirit, you won. So um, mm. that's just my, my spirit. Your yeah. spirit. Yeah. Right, right. So exactly. I mean, that's just what I'm going to stick to. Uh, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Um, but what do you think, you know, in hindsight of everything, what do you think it takes for um, for a Stacey Abram to win the governor of the state of Georgia? A fair fight. We, mm -hmm. oh, yes. I mean, th this was not a function of loss. We didn't win, but that's because the person in charge of determining the winner and the loser got to control the scoreboard, my the scorekeeping, God. and he also got to be the contestant. My, uh, my God. My God, my God. Voter suppression is real. It is not just about... You know, we've, we're seeing electoral fraud in North Carolina, but voter suppression is insidious. It begins mm. by making it hard to register. Yes, there's online registration, but if you live in, in South Georgia, you don't have access to the Internet for thousands, hundreds of thousands of people. Mm. So it's an impediment. You get mm. registered, but you get purged from the rolls because they feel like it. You get to wow. the polling place, only your polling place has been moved or you don't have machinery in there, and you're a shift worker who has to wait four hours, which means you're mi missing four hours of your salary and your family mm -hmm. can't afford it, so you can't afford to vote. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Voter Ooh. suppression is real wow. and it affected hundreds of thousands of Georgians, and if you look at the narrowness of the margin of this election, you know that this was not a fair fight, mm -hmm. and the way another Stacey Abrams, me or someone else, wins is that we fight suppression where it is, mm -hmm. we refuse to concede that it's right, yes. and we do what we must to make sure people don't forget. The energy and excitement we felt on November 6th mm -hmm. has to remain. It yes. does. Mm -hmm. Because the minute we let them, they win by us conceding mm -hmm. that it's not fixable. And mm -hmm. that's why we filed a lawsuit and we're going to keep working and people right. should go to Fair Fight Georgia if you want to learn more. Yes. Well, well, you know what? I thank you because you did that. You created that energy mm -hmm. that, that happened on November 6th. Yes, you yeah. did. Stacey, it sounds to me that, and we see that it was a domino effect. Why from the beginning was he even allowed to run? Yes. Why was there nothing in position? to say he needed to step down yes. as Secretary of State, right. maybe for a number of years. I have always asked this. Maybe for a number of years, didn't have so much many connections. Why was that never not ever brought to the table? We So it, it's in the Constitution of Georgia that you don't have to step down from a job that you hold. However, we started talking about this. We've been chanting this but suppression has been so much a part of Georgia's history about American history mm. that we're, we're numb to it because it typically affects communities that don't actually change the direction of elections. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Being poor, you face voter suppression every day if you're from a community that's disenfranchised. This is the first time it actually changed an election. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the challenge was that no one took it seriously. I mean, we kept, we talk about it all the time. But what we have to recognize is that it only works consistently if we let them get away with it again. Right. Mm -hmm. And so he's not going to be the Secretary of State in 2022, but he will be the governor. Mm -hmm. And they have a new Secretary of State. So we have to fight now mm -hmm. to make sure that in 2020, or actually in 2019 with the municipal elections, 2020 mm -hmm. with the presidential elections, Georgia is a battleground state. We have to fight like it's a battleground state, yes. and we have to make certain that every vote gets counted. Absolutely. All right, well, really quickly, I gotta know, this is a question that everybody wants to know. Will you run for political office again? Yes. Yes! Yes! yes. 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 You fight. Yes. That is how you fight. And speaking of fight, fight. How do we join in your efforts and yes. what you are doing? Thank you. So, Fair Fight Georgia is the most important piece. Uh, if you go to fairfightgeorgia.com, uh, you can sign up. We will send you emails. You will get sick of us. Uh, <laughs> if you would like to read my books, <laughs> uh, Leave from the Outside is what's going to be called as of March. But Minority Leader is available today, and you do that, and that helps me pay for some of my bills. Nice. Uh, <laughs> But more than anything, just let us know what you need, and that's going to be our mission. Yeah, Absolutely. We, we look so forward much, to man. seeing what is on the horizons yes, for yes, Stacey ma Abrams. Yes. Again, if you want to join her in fighting for election reform, please go to fairfightgeorgia.com. And don't forget to pick up her new book, Lead from the Outside, coming out in paperback in March. And, of course, the conversation always continues at sistercircletv.com. Yay! Yay!